So, perfect. So the paper we're talking about today is megabytes, uh, predicting million byte sequences with multi-scale transformers. So the baseline that we have been talking about for essentially all the papers so far are what are known as autoregressive transformers. Uh, transformers came, were from the paper, Attention is All You Need, that came out in uh, 2017, I believe, and transformers have been the basis of uh, really all major uh, developments within deep learning in the last five years or so. Um, all the LMs we work with are transformers. Uh, transformers work uh, amazingly well in short sequences, but they scale very poorly to long sequences um, of really any information. Uh, so we give it short sequences of text, but transformers can also be used on images, podcasts, video, uh, really any data, but their context window is quite limited. So the authors of Megabyte propose Megabyte, a multi-scale decoder architecture that enables end-to-end -end differentiable modeling of sequences of over 1 million bytes. So to step through that, a multi-scale means there are, well, I guess one, I'll preface this by saying Megabyte is by far the most complex uh, paper we've read so far because it essentially proposed an entirely new architecture that uh, strays from transformers. So if any of you have read this before or are familiar with Megabyte, please correct me if I say anything incorrect uh, because there are still a lot of uh, holes in my understanding of Megabyte. But Megabyte is a multi-scale decoder because it uses a patch framework, which we'll get into later, but it essentially decodes in uh, like recursively, where it splits up the long token sequence, or not token sequence, but input sequence into smaller parts. Um, and then because of that, it's able to model relationships across the entire input sequence by using and splitting up the entire input sequence into smaller inputs and then divvying that up to different uh, transformers. So that's what allows it to scale to over 1 million bytes. Uh, megabyte segment sequences into what they call patches and then uses a local submodel within the patches and then a global model between the patches. So they take the input sequence, split it up into patches, which is defined by their patch size, which we'll get to later. Um, or actually, this diagram on the first page is a good example. So in figure one, the patch size is four, uh, which is what these four bytes are at the bottom. And they're splitting up this entire input sequence into four byte chunks. So then, uh, like the big benefit of megabyte over traditional autoregressive transformers that have, like, th that are the current state of the art, um, is that megabyte enables subquadratic self attention, uh, which is a really big breakthrough. So traditional self-attention with autoaggressive transformers, um, it's uh, log n squared. So the rate at which you need the transformer to grow in order to be able to grow the input sequence to maintain self-attention uh, for autoaggressive transformers uh, traditionally is um, just a lot, or the exponent is much greater. So uh, it's much more difficult to scale autoaggressive transformers to larger input sequences. Uh, so Megabyte enables subquadratic self-attention, uh, the specific, uh, it's instead of log n squared, it's log n to the power of 4 over 3 or 1.333. So the sub or Megabyte enables both subquadratic self-attention as well as larger feed-forward layers for the same compute uh, when compared to an autoaggressive transformer and improved parallelism during decoding, uh, which unlocks a huge performance gain at reduced cost for the training generation because Megabyte is able to parallelize its workflow and compute in a way that traditional autoaggressive transformers aren't. Uh, while Megabyte can split up the input sequence and then give it give each patch to a different uh, embedding model and then global model. Uh, 
That is in contrast to autoaggressive transformers where every step of the process in a traditional autoaggressive transformer relies on the output of the previous step so that you cannot parallelize uh, the autoaggressive transformers calculations. Uh, they run extensive experiments, which we'll get to later on in the paper that shows that Megabyte allows byte level models to perform competitively with subword level models on long context language modeling achieving state of the art image or state of the art density estimation on ImageNet which is a, a famous image test net or test data set within um, AI as well as modeling audio from just the raw bytes from the audio file so when they say megabyte allows byte level models to perform competitively with subword models uh, subword models are what we have been wor or what we are familiar with and what the current state of the art is so by subword they mean tokenization where a tokenizer splits up uh, english words into smaller tokens that the uh, models are able to understand and megabyte does not use tokenization instead uses this patch system which means that uh, the model is seeing at or the smallest increment of data that the model is ever seeing is uh, patch level or like byte level models. Uh, so the, the results of Megabyte establish the viability of a tokenization free autoaggressive sequence modeling um, at scale. So typically the state of the art right now uh, is that LLMs, large language models, um, only have several thousand uh, tokens for context. Uh, Anthropic, a few weeks ago, released um, the announcement that Claude is now able to accept 100,000 tokens uh, of input, but that's still much smaller than Megabyte, uh, because Megabyte's able to feed in a million, or take in a million bytes. Uh, so, uh, another limiting factor of LLMs traditionally is that they have a quadratic or log n squared uh, cost of self-attention and also more importantly the cost of the large feed-forward networks is per position uh, so that severely limits the set of tasks where LLM can, LLMs can be applied because of their limited context window uh, as well as extremely costly feed-forward network uh, So with Megabyte, they first split byte sequences into fixed size patches. Uh, you can think of them as a loose analogy to tokens, uh, where a patch is seen to the model in a similar way as a token, uh, but a patch is much larger in size, which is what allows the context uh, window to be much larger. Uh, Megabyte then consists of three parts. A patch embedder, which simply encodes a patch uh, by losslessly concatenating the embeddings of each byte. Then a global module, a large autoaggressive transformer that inputs and outputs patch, uh, patch representations, and then a local model, which are s several small autoaggressive uh, models that predicts bytes within a patch. So you can see at the top, after it goes to the global model, the local models are then, within each patch, they're then predicting the next byte within the patch they're given. Uh, for most tests, many, most byte predictions are relatively easy. Like, for example, completing the word given a few characters, being that large networks per byte are, un are unnecessary, and the smaller models can be used for this patch modeling, where you need a large global model because the global model is what enables the uh, what enables Megabyte to have context and representations between patches. But within each local model, it's only seeing a patch at a time, and predicting the next uh, byte within a patch is a fairly simple task because it's often just completing a word. So because of that, um, all these local models can be quite small because the task they're individually doing is not that complex. Uh, the intelligence of Megabyte and its abilities come from the global model and then the sum of all of the local models work.
So the Megabyte architecture, uh, it has three main improvements over the current state of the art for uh, particularly long sequence modeling. So it has self-quadratic self-attention, like we mentioned before. Most work on long sequence models have focused on mitigating the cost of uh, quadratic self-attention. Uh, Megabyte decomposes long sequences into two shorter sequences, and optimal patch size, sizes reduce the self-attention cost to um, O of n over 4 over 3, which remains tractable even for long sequences. Uh, even big O of n over 4 over 3 has a much uh, slower increase rate than a quadratic self-attention rate. Did someone have a question? OK. Uh, then with per patch feed forward layers, In GPT-3 size models, uh, more than 98% of the flops, which is a uh, compute power uh, metric, is used for computing position-wide feed-forward layers. Uh, Megabyte uses large feed-forward layers per patch rather than per position, which enables a much larger and more expressive models for the same cost because it doesn't, it's not doing feed-forward per layer. Uh, with a patch size P, where the baseline transformer uses the same feed-forward layer with n parameters p times, uh, Megabyte can use a layer with m times p parameters once for the same cost. What I think is probably the most important uh, piece that led to the biggest breakthrough, uh, anyone, if anyone's read this paper and disagrees, please let me know, but I think that parallelism in decoding is what really enables Megabyte to scale in a way that autoaggressive transformers traditionally have not been able to, because traditional autoaggressive transformers must perform all computations serially, so one after the other during generation, because the input for each uh, step requires the output from the previous step. Uh, by generating representations for patches in parallel, uh, Megabyte allows for greater parallelization uh, during generation. Uh, the example they give is that a megabyte model with 1.5 billion parameters can generate sequences 40% 40 40 faster than a standard 350 million model or parameter transform model, while also improving the perplexity uh, when trained on the same compute as a baseline. So the altogether the improvements of megabyte over traditional autoaggressive transformers. Uh, the benefit is that allows uh, you to train a much larger model and better performing model for the same compute budget when compared to a traditional autoaggressive transformer. And then on top of that, Megabyte's able to scale to very long sequences um, that regardless of the compute, uh, the autoaggressive transformer, or not regardless of the compute, but at the same compute, the autoaggressive transformer would not be able to uh, do. So Megabyte also provides a strong contrast that you to autoaggressive models, which um, typically use tokenization, which we're all familiar with, uh, where sequences of bytes are mapped to larger discrete tokens. So tokenization complicates preprocessing uh, and then transfer into new domains because tokenization is domain specific. Uh, replacing tokenization with an efficient and performant byte model uh, would have a lot of benefits, particularly the ability to generalize uh, the transformer and not have to know the domain beforehand and be able to uh, build generalizable multimodal models. On uh, their experiments and testing, they find that Megabyte allows byte-level models to perform competitively with subword models on long context modeling. Uh, the success of Megabyte establishes the viability of tokenization-free autoaggressive sequence modeling at scale. Uh, so now we get into the math. We are going to skim over this, mainly just because it would take a very, very long time to walk through all of it. But the main components that are important to understand for Megabyte and the parts are a patch embedder that inputs a discrete sequence, the input sequence, and then embeds each element and chunks it into patches of length p. 
Uh, so patch size is an important uh, parameter within uh, Megabyte. And then the second step is that a large global transformer that contextualizes patch representations by performing self-attention over previous patches, which allows uh, the global model to have context and connections between patches. And then smaller local transformers that input a uh, patch with context from the global transformer. So with the context from the global transformer and the patch, the local transformer is then able to auto-aggressively predict the next patch. Okay, we'll talk about the variations and extensions. Um, so, so far we've talked about just the base megabyte. Uh, this next section is on convolutional patch encoders. So a, limited, a limitation of chunking sequences into patches um, is that it's not translation invariant and byte sequences may receive a different representation depending on their position in a patch. Uh, for example, this would mean that a model has to relearn the meaning of a word at different offsets. Uh, to mitigate this, they experimented with augmenting the patch embedder with casual convolutional layers, which allow translation invariant contextual representations of bytes before they're chunked into patches. Cross patch attention. Um, so the local models use short sequences for efficiency. Uh, short sequences of their patch size. And the local models rely on the global model for long range information because the local model is only seeing its own small input patch and it's just trying to predict the next byte in that. And the, it relies on information and context from the global model to be able to uh, gain information about the entire input sequence, um, which is important for Megabyte being able to produce uh, byte predictions that take into account the rest of, or the entire input sequence. Uh, however, they can increase the context of the local model with a little overhead by allowing it to condition on R elements from the previous patch. So if they give it both the current patch and the previous patch and the global context, this allows the global model to focus on a longer range context and not have to worry uh, and not have to provide as much immediate uh, information about the previous patch if you allow the local model to go back um, a certain number of elements into the previous patch. Specifically when computing self-attention in each layer of Megabyte, uh, they concatenate the keys and values with the last R keys and queries from the previous patch. So that's just giving the local model the information from the previous patches. Uh, then they use rotary embeddings. I'm not totally sure what a rotary embedding is, but and embedding in general uh, to model the relative positions between elements in the sequence. This is apparently uh, reminiscent mm -hmm. of prior work known as tra uh, Transformer XL. So they observed that the per, po or per token loss within each patch would increase towards the end of the patch um, as the prediction relies more on the weaker model. To alleviate this issue, they propose what they refer to as stride inference, which allows them to predict the sequence with two forward passes for, of the full model, whose inputs are offset by p divided by two positions from each other. They then combine the first two, uh, the first p divided by two positions of each patch um, to predict the complete sequence. Uh, similarly to sliding window techniques, uh, which is a prior uh, technique in the literature. So onto the motivation of why they chose or designed Megabyte and what was the inspiration for it. So why did they use a local model? Many of the efficiency advantages of Megabyte's design um, could be realized only with the global model. Uh, however, the distribution of the patch has an output size space of 256 to the power of P. So as you increase the patch size, it 
is an exponential growth for the output space. So direct modeling is only possible if the if your patch size is quite small. Because any uh, even nominally large patch size would lead to a search space that's far too large to have direct modeling. Uh, they instead con or they consider a uh, factor. Uh, the joint distribution to conditionally independent distributions uh, that great limit the model's expressive power. It would be unable to express a pass distribution uh, such as 50% cat and 50% dog and would have to assign probabilities to strings. Instead, they are local model conditions on previous characters within the patch allowing it to only assign probability to the desired strings. So it allows it to have better self-attention within the local model. So a benefit of megabyte over traditional autoaggressive transformers is that megabyte allows for larger models for the same cost when compared to a traditional autoaggressive mm -hmm. transformer. Um, that does this by its subquadratic self-attention and by using larger feedforward layers across patches rather than individual tokens. So giving each local model a larger piece of the entire input context. So figure three uh, is an interesting one. Uh, it's about computational cost. So the uh, x-axis is the total sequence length or the input uh, context length. And then the y-axis, the uh, flops, which is a measure of computation. Uh, divided by the token, so how efficient uh, it is per token. So this compares uh, transformers, uh, linear model, or yeah, linear autoaggressive models, as well as megabyte at different uh, parameter sizes. So with megabyte architectures, um, all of them in this graph have a patch size of less than eight. Um, and when the patch size is less than eight, uh, Megabyte uses fewer flops than equivalently sized linear and uh, or equivalently sized autoaggressive transformer and linear transformer. So it's a more efficient uh, transformer architecture than the previous state of the art. Um, so they controlled, uh, so I guess we're getting into the experimental setup and then later the results. So they, uh, normalized the compute and input data for, uh, the linear transformers, autoaggressive transformers, and the megabyte architecture, which is also a transformer. Uh, so they compare megabyte with both a, a standard decoder only transformer and then uh, perceiver AR. Perceiver AR um, is a work in the prior literature. Uh, perceiver AR extends the original transformer with a single cross-attention layer over a much larger uh, context sequence than a traditional transformer, um, and is currently the best performing general purpose autoaggressive model they, the authors of Megabyte are aware of, and achieves uh, state-of-the-art results across different modalities. Uh, they implemented both models and all models uh, share data processing uh, and compute to avoid artifacts um, to avoid artifacts in their uh, results. They use PyTorch for training, um, and they used a fully shorted model for a uh, fully shorted memory model. Uh, what else is interesting here?
So they evaluate Megabyte on language modeling across five data sets. Um, and they chose data sets that emphasize long uh, form English language uh, modeling. So they use Project Gutenberg, which has a lot of uh, books in the public domain, um, as well as archive the uh, Cornell's preprint server, um, and then other established uh, data sets within the AI machine learning community. So uh, we're familiar with Project Gutenberg. It's just public domain books and archive. Um, code is a large publicly available data set of open source code um, under different open source licenses. Uh, books is also another collection of English language books. And the stories data set um, is another one I'm not familiar with this data set, but it, it's another English language training data set that um, has long uh, input sequences to train on and test on. So they train each, they, or each model is trained for 80 billion bytes of uh, training data, and then the models are scaled to use the same compute budget. Uh, they tuned all the hyperparameters for each architecture to best utilize the available compute budget. Uh, Megabyte consistently outperformed both baseline transformers and Perceiver AR, which was the state-of-the-art uh, model for this use case for long input sequences prior to Megabyte. Wow, yeah. So just looking at how many bytes are in the average document for each of these data sets. They are quite uh, large testing and training data sets for transformers specifically. So what this graph is essentially, or this table two is essentially just showing that the bytes per compute, or sorry, bits per byte, uh, which is the efficiency of, uh, it's just it just shows that megabyte is the most efficient uh, performance-wise of the traditional transformer, perceiver AR, and megabyte. So their traditional transformer uh, has, or is a 320 million parameter model, and it has a context length of 1,024 uh, tokens. Perceiver AR is a 248 million uh, parameter model, and it has a context sequence of 8,192 tokens. And then Megabyte has uh, its global model. I'm sorry, did someone say something? I think someone just joined the. Okay. Uh, Megabyte's global model has 758 million parameters, and each local model has 262 million uh, parameters. 262 million parameters is a lot larger than I would have expected based on their previous claims of the local model being able to be quote-unquote small. Uh, when your local small model has almost as many parameters as the transformers you're comparing it against, it's not really actually much smaller than the current state of the art. So Megabyte outperforms both traditional transformer and perceiver AR uh, on English language uh, text modeling. So they also, in addition to English language text modeling, they uh, test Megabyte on image modeling. So they test Megabyte on variants of the autoaggressive image generation task on ImageNet. Uh, to measure its ability to efficiently use long context. Uh, they test on several different resolutions of images, ranging from 64 by 64 pixels all the way up to 640 by 640 pixels. Um, and a 640 by 640 pixel image requires um, the effective modeling of over 1.2 million tokens. Uh, so this generation task with such a large uh, image size is increasingly difficult. Um, and the generation task 
grows at a quadratic rate as the input uh, as the image size scales, assuming it's a square image, which almost all images for uh, machine learning are, or normalized to that. So doing well on the task of image generation uh, requires the ability or the model to be able to uh, model local patterns as well as long range context uh, throughout the entire input uh, sequence. And that the ability for the uh, model to have long range input context sequence is what allows it to understand the high level structure of the image. Uh, their work with megabyte in uh, image generation and image modeling was inspired by Vision Transformer and similar to how they have megabyte worked for English language text data, they also model image data patch by patch. So they estimate that training uh, megabyte for ImageNet uh, images of 64 by 64 pixels, uh, they estimate that training that model consumed less than half the GPU resources they would have needed to produce uh, the previous state of the art which was perceiver AR. Uh, Megabyte matches the performance of the previous state of the art while only using half the compute, which is a quite impressive uh, efficiency per compute metric. So they compare through transformer variants, vanilla, perceiver AR, and Megabyte uh, to test the scalability of using long sequences on increasingly large image resolutions. Uh, they implement all of uh, these different transformer variants uh, in the same framework, which was PyTorch, and budget the same amount of compute uh, to each one and use the same data sets to train each model. So Megabyte uh, was able to handle all sequence lengths with a single, pa single forward pass. Um, and with just a single forward pass, it was able to have a context window of up to 1.2 million tokens. Um, they found that neither uh, the traditional or perceiver AR transformer models uh, could model such long sequences at any reasonable model size. So instead, to be able to even compare the vanilla transformer and perceiver AR against Megabyte, they had to split the images into sequences of 1,024 and 12,000 uh, bytes respectively. So for Megabyte, they set the patch size at 12 uh, with when they were using 64 by 64 pixel images, and they set the patch size at 192 uh, when they trained it on both 256 by 256 pixel images as well as 640 by 640 pixel images. Uh, model sizes were normalized to match overall training speeds. Uh, because they gave each model the same compute duration and time. Or they gave both models the same number of GPUs, so the compute amount in the same time uh, for training. So Megabyte outperforms the previous state-of-the-art um, in image, uh, or image modeling. So now on to the evaluation of the language modeling. Uh, we previously talked about the experimental setup. So we've already gone over the data sets. And we also already, what was this? Is table two and table seven the same exact thing? Yeah, I think so, okay. We've already gone over a lot of this because they had a lot of their experimental results in their section describing the experimental setup. Uh, what is worth noting here? Already went over this. Already went 
of that. Okay, on to audio modeling, which is very interesting. Also, a new modality that's really only enabled uh, for use with transformers by megabyte because the context window for previous state of the art uh, transform architectures simply didn't have uh, enough or large enough context window to really be able to generate audio from bytes, um, or at least audio of any substantial length and uh, file size. So audio is interesting because it has both the sequential nature of the text, which is just the bytes underlying it, um, and it's also continuous. Uh, so it's an interesting application of megabyte. Uh, so it has the sequential nature of text and the uh, continuous nature of images. So while images and or text are both interesting on their own, audio is a very challenging modality, uh, at least it has been so far for transform models. So some context and background to understand uh, this, or audio modeling. Raw audio is typically stored as a sequence of 16-bit integer values, uh, one 16-bit integer per time step. Uh, so if they were going to apply a traditional autoaggressive transformer uh, to raw audio, the softmax layer of the autoaggressive transformer would need to output 600 or 65,536 probabilities per time step, so every single step in the audio, uh, to model all possible values, uh, and that would just be computationally impractical. So to address this, uh, prior work, or at least, or sorry, in prior work, there have been various techniques that uh, researchers have employed to address uh, the extremely large uh, number of probabilities need, that they need to compute per time step. Uh, so there are various techniques already developed in the past uh, to reduce both the memory and the computational requirements of the softmax layer when doing audio modeling. Can I just um, check in with that? Um, yeah. Why would it be necessary to output a 65536 values for each time step? I like one for each um, like because possible every... combination of 2 to the 16. Why can't we just have a single floating point value that's output? Uh, I guess, isn't... Uh... 600 or 65,000 probabilities inherent to the fact that each uh, time step is a 16 bit integer. Yeah, I mean, that's where it's coming from. 2 to the power of 16 is 65536, I think. Uh, it just seems odd that. Uh, it seems odd that they're getting. constraining themselves to output it at a bit level, like to get the transformer to output bits doesn't strike me as something that I've seen a transformer capably do before to kind of digitize what is essentially an analog value in that way. Oh, yeah, I think more strange. Yeah. I guess the, I think the portion of that example is to show that that would not be computationally possible with the current state of the art transformer architecture. I just wonder if it's a straw man argument that they're proposing oh. a kind of ludicrous yeah. situation not... and then. Arguing against really it. Sure. Yeah. I would have imagined that you would want to output a single floating point value and then just um, convert it to signed in 16. Mm, yeah. Interesting. I'm sorry, I missed the beginning of the talk. Um, might someone link the paper in the associated chat? That would probably be quite a good thing to do at the start of any reading group. 
yeah, I can pull it up. Dunk the paper into the chat. Is this working? Um, it, I believe the reading group voice chat is a bit harder to find now. Is that impacting us? Uh, I don't think so. I think almost anyone that would be interested has already signed up for the reading group role. And once you do that, uh, you're able to you. join the group. I have pinned the message within the news um, about having to click that uh, emoji to get access to this voice channel. Funnily enough, I didn't click the emoji, but I'm still in. I wonder if that's because I've got I'm a Discord admin, so I didn't have to. Yeah, I think that's exactly why. That might be it. Okay. I just dropped the paper in the main reading group. Chat. Is it desirable not to have the reading group publicly visible? No. So the reason they uh, we did that was because the emoji reaction is um, indicating that you are consenting to being recorded. Oh, right. I see. That's how you solved that one. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yep. Got it. So these are patch size of 32 um, for audio modeling, uh, which is quite large. I imagine that would be quite computationally um, intensive compared to both image and uh, text modeling, where they use much smaller patch sizes. And uh, as we previously saw within the paper, the uh, computational cost of megabyte uh, scales either linearly or quadratically with patch size. I forget which one. Um, so now looking at text generation speed or inference uh, and comparing megabyte to a traditional uh, autoregress transformer, they compare megabyte against a 350 million parameter baseline transformer. Uh, and then the megabyte transformer they use for this comparison has a 1.3 billion parameter global model and a 218 million parameter local model, or local models as there are many. Uh, and they use the Project Gutenberg uh, book database, uh, and they use equal compute for both the what they call the vanilla transformer and megabyte. So table nine, they're essentially just showing that the efficiency of so the bits per byte, um, as well as the generation time, is much faster when using megabyte uh, compared to a traditional autoaggressive transform model. So what they're showing here is on figure four is essentially just that as the token or as megabyte is moving through the entire input context and gets deeper within the context window, so more tokens in, um, uh, the likelihood or it just shows that it's able to use the entire context window and make connections and essentially uh, understand the entire scale of the context window in a way that, of course, uh, vanilla transformers cannot because once you get, uh, or once your context window expands or your input sequence is larger than its context window, it cannot, uh, it loses the ability 
to understand connections with prior tokens that are now outside um, its context window, if that makes sense. So like, as you're going up in token count, and then with the vanilla transformer right here, you hit the uh, context window length of the transform model. So then going forward, uh, in order to show that vanilla transform more tokens deeper into the context window, you have to cut off earlier tokens that were at the start of the con or of the context sequence. And this increasing line over the entire context window shows that Megabyte is able to understand and use the entire uh, sequence because its context window is much larger. Megabyte also is able to generate text 40% uh, faster than uh, vanilla transformer despite having uh, more than four times the number of parameters. So the speed up of megabyte and its ability to more quickly generate uh, text is because most of the parameters in, are in the global model and the global model only needs to be uh, computed per patch, uh, which in this case is eight. Uh, that's their patch size for text generation. So because most parameters are only in the global model, and the global model is only uh, making computations for every patch, not every token. Uh, that means the most computationally intensive parts of Megabyte are happening much less frequently when compared to a traditional transformer. So, they, I'm forgetting the exact word. There's a machine learning word or term with use with the machine learning where they take away certain aspects of a model to compare it to the whole model, which allows them to see what benefit they're getting by the components they removed. So they test a megabyte both uh, with only the global model and only the local model. And they found that the uh, bits per byte, so the compute efficiency, or the compute required for each byte uh, increased significantly, showing that uh, both the local and global model are crucial to Megabyte's overall performance. They also... Um, they also took out the cross-patch local model, uh, which we go all the way back up here. Is I think this step, um, and they found And they found that didn't significantly decrease uh, performance of Megabyte compared to the full architecture. So the cross-patch local modeling uh, is not as uh, crucial to Megabyte's performance, at least compared to the crucial importance of both the local and global model. So they also tried adding a convolutional neural, neural network encoder uh, to the Megabyte model. Uh, and they tested that improve or the addition of the convolutional neural network encoder model, uh, both on the ImageNet uh, dataset as well as Lilbright L. Uh, that's another AI uh, dataset, but they haven't mentioned it so far in this paper. So, the success of using a CNN encoder showed that uh, the megabyte architecture can be generalized and benefit. It depending on the uh, domain uh, and the input context or the, the input modality, uh, Megabyte can benefit by having by using different uh, encoding mechanisms. Okay, 
onto hyperparameters. So, Megabyte, when compared to a traditional transform model, introduces several uh, new hyperparameters. Uh, they tune these parameters independently for different modalities uh, and reported performance based on the best setting they were able to find. So, patch size is the most important uh, new hyperparameter within Megabyte. So, they test out different uh, patch sizes uh, with the image uh, 256 dataset and found uh, there was a large range of patch values where Megabyte performed similarly, uh, which suggests that, uh, particularly on the image modality, the patch size was not that important or not that crucial to Megabyte's performance. Uh, they also found that uh, that was not only the case within images, but that patch size uh, in, all, in all modalities did not significantly affect the performance of Megabyte, although the optimal, optimal patch size uh, itself can be different across modalities. So the patch size can be optimized for each modality, but there's a fairly large range within each modality where the patch size can be and still perform fairly well. So another hyperparameter within Megabyte that's new when compared to traditional autoregressive transformers is uh, because Megabyte has both a global and local model, the ratio and like size ratio and parameters between the local and global model is another hyperparameter that can be tuned. Uh, they experimented with different combinations of model sizes for the local and global models um, using the Project Gutenberg dataset. Uh, so when they group bytes into patches instead of tokens, Megabyte effectively uses P, which is the number of the patch size, times less tokens for the global model because the global model is only being computed for each patch, not each uh, individual token. So because of that, uh, it leads to a, a large, uh, or that enables them to increase the size of the global model a lot, but still uh, not have that significantly in, er, hurt the compute requirements of Megabyte because the global model is only being computed uh, once every P uh, bytes. They find that, pretty unsurprisingly, when the compute budget or the compute budget is, is better spent and produces better results when the global model is larger than the local model, I think that's not very surprising. Uh, and the fact and the ratio of having a larger global model to the local model is beneficial for a megabyte across all, mo all modalities and all patch sizes. So we don't have to go over the related work. But essentially, the really important breakthrough over current state-of-the-art models that Megabyte introduced was that it allows large model large models to have input sequences of over one million uh, tokens. So, anyone have any questions or thoughts? I suppose my um, main question thought is, um, why is the reading group so quiet? And I wonder if it might be to do with the fact that they're being recorded, so nobody really wants to voice up and ask a question um, for worry of looking stupid. So I wonder if recording the um, reading groups is actually backfiring. Mm, yeah, that's a good point. I hadn't thought about that. Because I went, I, um, the last reading group that I put my head in was um, going like a house on fire. Like there was uh, qu quite a lot of discussion and debate. Um, so yeah. It might... um, I guess it also depends on who's here. Uh, I think I was the only one who'd read any of this paper, and it's by far the most complex we've uh, the comp the most complex paper we've read so far in reading group. 
Yeah, I tried to have a look through it because um, I joined late, so I just pulled it up on my Chrome. Um, and I have to say, I can't, <laughs> I can't get very much out of it just by eyeballing it. No, it's not really a skillable paper, which a lot of the ones we have read have been pretty skimmable. Uh, but this one, because it proposed an entirely new transformer architecture, the details and math are quite important to really understand what's going on. What's your um what's your conclusion with this paper? How impactful is it in the short term and long term, do you think? I think it could be quite impactful, especially if uh, LM producers st struggle to increase context size. Like a few weeks ago, Anthropic announced that Claude had an expanded context window of 100,000 tokens, uh, but that's still much smaller compared to the 1 million bytes that Megabyte's able to handle. So I think with a lot of the tasks people use LLMs for, it won't have that much benefit because the context window is already large enough that's not that important. Uh, but if you're using a transformer architecture for some task uh, I, that has a very large uh, context required, like images, video, audio. Yes. Uh, so, uh, like non-text modalities is where Megabyte will have the most important impact and be able to bring transformers to a to more modalities that they were previously limited. I wonder if that effectively raises the IQ of the transformer, just having a larger context window. Yeah, I think so. Um, at yeah. least with the, with the global model, they're definitely, the ability to have a larger context window, I, it, the gold model has a very large context window and very large uh, space within its self-attention, but it has a very, uh, or it doesn't have a very fine-grained view of what's in the context sequence. It only sees it from a very high level because it's only seeing each patch, not each byte. So it can kind of see the general relationships between the entire context window, but we. There's, or the transformer still didn't have, doesn't have the ability to make individual like byte connections within its entire context window. Gotcha. Yeah. I assume you discussed performance earlier in the talk. Yeah. Uh, but how, how does it perform in terms of computational demand? Is um, it, it's able to. Does it look like it'll be feasible? Yeah, it's able to match current state-of-the-art um, transformer architectures while using about 50% of the compute. Oh, very interesting. Well, that's a saving of a few billion dollars straight away for Megacorp. Yeah, yeah. Really cut down the GPU uh, AWS costs. So these, um, these guys that wrote the paper, they seem to be meta AI people. Well, one, okay. most of them are. Four out of five of the authors are. One, two, three, oh, yeah. five out of six are from Meta. So I wonder why Meta are actually publishing. Meta are kind of um, hacking away at OpenAI by publishing things, aren't they? They published Llama and somehow leaked it. And that took well, a yeah. right out of OpenAI, and now they're publishing this. Yeah, I guess Llama, they didn't want leaked, and they've been actually issuing DMCA takedown notices for places that are hosting the weights. Uh, oh, really? Have you got hold of the weights? Oh, yeah, I got a hold of uh, <laughs> that one of them, of course, as soon as they were put up because I knew this would happen. Uh, like, the, the day they got leaked on 4chan, I ha already had local copies. Uh, I suppose we'd better be careful because we're being recorded, but yes, it's um, worth probably getting hold of those while we can. Yeah, but uh, I, this seems more like... <laughs> the attention is all you need paper from 2017 where it's a very large architectural breakthrough but it it's quite it would be quite difficult to implement in practice so it'll probably be a while before we see this in the wild really changing uh how ai is being used and implemented in the real world is there as of now any implementation of any public implementation of this paper 
Um, I'm not sure if they're. Imp- I guess I probably doubt their code is public. Uh, but they created a like mock uh implementation of Megabyte for this paper. Let's see, I'm not sure if the code is. Oh yeah. So why would it be difficult to implement? Oh, just because it has both local and global models. So it's just a lot more complex than a traditional transformer architecture. Uh, it just is, it's almost like a superstructure combination of several transformer transformers, as well as it has the intricacies of choosing patch size and choosing your encoder. It just adds a lot of complexity that would be more difficult to implement in practice, and especially uh, trying to like fine-tune hyperparameters because there are more. In this case, it's just more complex and there are more moving parts compared to a traditional uh, autoregressive transformer. It says it achieves subquadratic self-attention. Does it actually specify? Is it logarithmic, like n log n? Uh, it's uh, n to the power of 4 over 3. Okay. Well, that's quite good. Yeah. That's Pretty significant decrease. Uh, uh, well, that's more than n log n, but less than n squared. It's yeah, close the to baseline is n quadratic. I had a question. Is the model trainable using um, just commodity hardware, or does it need a uh, do we need a data center? To even. Uh, what do you mean by commodity hardware? Like, I assume based on the time when this was trained, they're probably using eighty gigabyte a- NVIDIA A one hundreds, which are commodity hardware, but also the most specialized GPUs for uh, machine learning. So. But they're not using like an ASIC or something proprietary, but they're probably just using the most capable uh, NVIDIA GPUs at the time. Yeah, I, I see. It, it's not something, a model that you can just train at home, like uh, with a GPU, one or two GPUs on a computer. Oh, no. You, and like, you also couldn't train any of the comparisons they made either. Uh, they're just way too many parameters. Like, you need hundreds likely terabytes of VRAM to do this. So multiple computers with multiple well, video cards each. Yeah, the, the normal setup is uh, usually like two AMD Epic CPUs and then eight uh, A1, 80 gigabyte A100s in a hyperplay and that are connected by NVLink, which is a high-speed interconnection framework between them. Uh, and also within data centers, like uh, your compute, like your CPU and your GPUs and your storage are all oftentimes in completely separate boxes far away from each other that are connected by fiber optics uh, for simplicity and uh, like yeah, containerization but, purposes. Yeah, but technologists like NVMe or if. Yeah, uh, like if InfiniBand is the big one within data centers. So even if you implement it and put the code out, it's useless because no, you can't train it without a lot of expense, right? Yeah. Uh, although, like there are people out there and individual, like mainly corporations and including startups that have the capital, the tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars that would be needed to train these models. But they also, if you have the money to train the model, you also conceive or most likely have the ability to implement this entire paper uh, on your own. But it's not, Megabyte is not an accessible uh, to the average person, at least right now. Uh, we will need weights.
Any other questions? What about the inference cost? Uh, so the, the inference cost, uh, they said it was 40% lower in computation while also being like 10% faster for at least text inference. Again, multiple computers with multiple graphics cards. <laughs> oh yeah, that's, yeah. For, for, like really to hold any of these large models within video, video memory, you need uh, multiple GPUs, like their megabyte within, or when they're doing text generation, the large or the global model is 1.3 billion parameters and the tr transformers they're comparing against are several hundred million parameters. So those are outside uh, the VRAM requirements of any one GPU, even a 80 gigabyte A100. But yeah, uh, I guess it's like assumed that all of this is being done on uh, multi GPU systems. Uh, I had a question about the embeddings. Um, they say they um, you don't need embeddings, or it it becomes specialized, right? Or so they say something like that, and then they replace it with um, some other. Um, Yeah, yeah, they tried yeah. replacing it with the convolutional neural network uh, embedding model for text generation. Uh, that was one of the experiments they tried on Megabyte. Uh, but then the embedding uh, model is uh, modality specific still. OK, but the, isn't the embedding layer also trained during, um, it's also created during the training phase, right? It, it's not, you don't I create thought it was embed pre I thought it was pre-made. In the transformer, it's not. It's trained with the with the model itself, I believe. Uh, let's see. The vanilla transformer. Oh yeah, with the vanilla transformer. I'm talking about megabyte. Yeah. Oh okay. So they have a um, pre-trained embeddings. Okay. Yep. Yep. So I had one more question. Uh, nobody else has it. It's a they said 90% of it is, uh, what was the quote, that it's doing the um, position encoding or something like that? Uh, uh, not what was the uh, That most, in, in the traditional transformer, most of the energy was, or the time was spent on. Oh, yeah. Um most of the computational resources, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Uh, is it here? But yeah, essentially, so the vast majority of the flops used at inference time for a traditional transformer uh, architecture is spent on, oh yeah, more than 98% of the flops used in computing position-wise. Uh, so 98% of the flops when uh, doing inference with a traditional autoaggressive transformer, 90% uh, of the comp compute is used for computing the position-wide feed forward layers. Um, so that's where the vast majority of the compute goes. It's uh, this. What was your question with it? Uh, I, that, that seems very, what does that mean used in Position-wise, feed-forward layers. I, I don't so, really know. Yeah. Uh, just like think of it generally as just like it's all of what's happening inside the model. Uh, and what like what they're trying to uh, like the point they're trying to make with this is that. Uh, Megabyte's much more efficient because most of its compute is spent on the large global model, which only looks at each patch, not each uh, token. While uh, the traditional autoaggressive transformer goes one position at a time, like one token at a time, while Megabyte's global model goes one patch at a time, which has many tokens within each patch.
Okay, yeah. That yeah. makes sense, but yeah. Yeah, so like this sentence uh, here might make it a bit clearer. So uh, like a traditional transformer, um, for every feed forward layer, it would do the feed forward with m parameters p number of times. So the total compute would be uh, the number of feed forward layers times the number of parameters times the patch size. I've got to run. Uh... Oh, Sam, before you run, um, quick thought. What's your thought on um, covering Tree of Thoughts quite soon? I am going to definitely put it in the next poll. Uh, I've been asked a lot about it and have heard a lot about it. So I am I would really hope that we read it next, or not uh, yeah, next, I think one more it, paper, but the next one after that. It looks like a really strong candidate because anything that's actually relevant to auto GPT um, would be a really good idea to prioritize, or at least to put in the the best available time zone that we get where most people are likely to be um, around. Um, and Tree of Thoughts is kind of dead on center for where AutoGPT is trying to go. OK, I'll make sure to include it in the next poll. Uh, yeah. If it, yeah. Coolio. OK, thanks for recording, Bentley. Uh, I guess well, the next thanks time for we presenting. Meet.